three. All right, let's do it. Meeting come to order, please. Town of Lee, right to know law meeting checklist as chairman of the select board due to the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis and in accordance with Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12 pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this board is meeting electronically utilizing a Zoom platform. We previously gave notice to the public of how to access this meeting using Zoom and instructions are provided on the Town of Lee website at LeeNewHampshire.org. If anybody has a problem with access, please call 603-659-5414. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by a roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during the meeting, which is required under the right to no law. Mr. Brown. Yes, I'm here and I'm alone. Mr. Bugby. Here and alone. Miss LaCourse, yes, here and alone. I guess we'll have, go to the first order of business, uh, John Sargent and guests. Please, you have the floor, sir. Thank you very much. Hello, this is John Sargent from New Hampshire DOT. I have a few other DOT uh, people with joining us tonight. One is Dave Scott, um, our design chief, uh, Jason Trembley our senior project engineer, and I believe uh, Melly Doobie was gonna join us also. She's our, our environmental coordinator. Um, we also have uh, McFarland Johnson working on this project and several of them. Those uh, people are gonna join us, uh, Josh Lunn, Sam White, and Steve Ireland. Um, so what we wanted to do is take a moment to um, to uh, kind of touch base with you guys on our, our Lee one, I mean, our Lee 41322 project. Um, we had sort of touched base quite a while ago, um, but with COVID, everything's kind of gotten a little bit backed up. This project is, um, oops, excuse me a second. This project, uh, this, carries uh, New Hampshire Route 125 over the um, uh, Little River. Uh, next slide, please. And it's located just, and you guys are probably much more familiar with it than a lot of people. It's um, a corrugated metal, metal arch pipe that is just, uh, just north of the Lee Speedway and just south of West Pond Road. Next slide, please. This was built in 1972, um, and it's a corrugated metal pipe arch, so it's not round. It has a bit of an arch shape, so it's 18 feet wide, 12 feet high. It actually has about eight feet of fill over the top and 108 feet long. The roadway just above this arch is 39 to 40 feet, which gives us two 12-foot lanes and two 8-foot shoulders carries about 20,000 cars a day, 7% which are truck. This, this particular bridge is currently on the red list and is number, uh, number 13. The main reason it's on the red list is the corrugated uh, pipe arch has some heavy corrosion down by the water line. Uh, next slide, please. These couple of photos are just to kind of get you a sense of where we are. We're standing pretty much on top of the pipe arch on the left-hand side, we're looking south. You can just see the speedway off in the distance. Uh, you have good sight visibility. It's long, it's straight, it's pretty flat. Uh, speed limit's 55 miles an hour. The right-hand picture is looking north. You can kind of see a sign just up near the end of the guardrail on the left-hand side of that picture where uh, West Mill, uh, West Pond Road, uh, Mill Pond Road uh, tees in. The next couple, the next slides on the next page. Um, first one on the left is looking downstream. And this pipe arch was put in in 72 was 90 degrees with the road. So the stream got shifted a little bit and you can see on the downhill side, it has sort of created a scour hole and then it takes a 90 degrees down sort of to the north and then a 90 degree bend back in the old channel uh, to the east. Uh, upstream, we have it coming in and then it takes sort of a bend of it about 45 degrees. And this is the channel that's sort of uh, 
created after the last, since 1972. Um, the next picture is just looking upstream in the pipe arch. Um, and the severe section loss is kind of shown on the uh, picture on the right hand side down at the water line. There's some holes in it and heavy corrosion. This is kind of one of the things we really want to address here. Um, next slide, please. Um, yeah, the, the, the issues we want to address, obviously, is the serious condition of this bridge and the fact that it's on, on the state red list. But while they're there, we'd, we'd like to uh, get a little better stream alignment, um, stay with um, the stream crossing rules and, and uh, give uh, animals the habitat to cross in this area. And we'd also like to uh, increase the hydraulic opening um, back in pre-72, the old bridge was a through plate girder built on the remains of the old railroad bridge. And I think it had about 550 square foot opening. Um, and the current, the current uh, uh, corrugated metal pipe has about 160, 180 uh, square foot opening. And after that went in, I think your road agent had noticed a little bit more flooding, a little bit more often. We know there's some beaver dams upstream and a, and a little dam upstream. Um, but one of the things we also wanted to resolve was any flushing, uh, flooding issues you guys have. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as we're going forward this, what we'd like to look at, we're at the very early stage, is what we call sort of pre-TS now type size and location. Um, so we haven't said anything. We're just getting a feel for what's out there, what may or may not work. And in this process, the first thing we'll be looking at is a bridge superstructure. Um, we'll probably be taking a look at a traditional bridge with a steel eye girders and a concrete deck. Um, we may also be looking at some concrete beams with a concrete deck, trying to see what makes the most fiscal sense and longevity. Foundations in this area we expect because of the soil conditions will likely be on piles, maybe a stub abutment or an integral abutment. Uh, span links to, uh, um, for the stream crossing rules are running somewhere between 60 and 120 feet, depending on the amount of skew and, and things like that. When all said and done, we'll likely be in the range of a 47 foot wide bridge, which would give us a 1210 typical. Um, there's a chance, you know, we could be putting back at 128, but my, my gut is we'll probably be at a, a 1210 in this area. Um, to achieve this, we um, next slide, please. Um, this is sort of just a, uh, a standard 1210 typical. We'd have the two 12 foot lanes and two 10 foot shoulders, one on each side. Something in this configuration is what I think we'll ultimately end up with, um, just to give you a little bit of background there. Next slide, please. Um, so the other thing is, what are we gonna do with traffic when we're building this? We've kind of been talking about different options. The, the traditional one we all think of is phase construction shifting traffic a little bit left or right. Um, it would be, in this case, we might need a little bit of additional length, so we, we might possibly extend the culvert a tiny bit, add a little bit of fill in that area in order to shift. Um, we'd also look at some accelerated bridge construction, some precast items, pre-built items, to see if we could speed this process, process up. Um, we're pretty certain it's gonna be a two season project, but we're gonna see what we can uh, do there, see if we can find it a little more efficient approach. We've also going to take a look at sort of an offline temporary bridge. And this one has more impacts. Um, and with the location of Mill Pond Road being so close to the culvert, trying to get a, a significant lane shift in starts to be, create a lot of different problems. Um, and then you get into right of way issues and and the duration gets a little longer. And it actually, you know, with, if we can do it with a phase by widening slightly, um, the temporary bridge almost seems like a very similar option that would just end up costing more and be a little bit more problematic. But we'll be working through some of these different things. Um, next slide, please. 
So what we have here is we've kind of overlaid it, overlaid the pre-1972 river, which is that sort of medium, I don't know if it's quite a turquoise blue, over the current uh, corrugated metal pipe arch. And you can see that it crosses 90, 90 degrees. On the bottom of the page, it enters into the scour hall, takes the 90 and another 90. And this uh, pre-1972 river, we sort of want to shift uh, the bridge a little bit if we can to accommodate the stream a little bit better, uh, work some of those out. So that was just to kind of give you a sense of what we have right there. Um, next slide, please. This is um, kind of a standard approach. We drew in quickly the, uh, the top of the pipe arch. You're currently on the top, they have the two 12 foot lanes and the eight foot shoulders. And if we could go with a phase by extending the culvert a little bit and then adding some fill, that's the next line down. So you have it, a little bit of additional room. Once you had that additional room, you would then shift traffic to the left-hand side, no, excuse me, the right-hand side. Uh, next slide, please. And that would allow you to build your bridge on the left-hand side while traffic is on the right. And then once you get the left-hand side done, you switch traffic over to the left-hand side, you take out the fill you put in place, and you complete the bridge. And this, this sort of approach we use obviously a lot of different places. And this, this schematic happens to be shifting it to the east side, um, but it could also be the west side that we may possibly use. But these are the sorts of things we'll take a look at. Next slide, please. Um, some of the feedback we, we'd like to get is emergency response routes, um, mutual aid you guys might have with different towns, school bus routes, any historic concerns. We know past flooding has been because I think you had a, a couple flood events in uh, 2006 and 2007 and then in 2010. So that's one of the things we really want to try and resolve here. Um, I don't think with the, that you have a lot of pedestrians or bicycle con concerns on this particular route um, or just anything else you might have. Um, Next slide, please. After we get your feedback, what we'll be doing is we'll, we'll look into the, evaluate the different alternatives, see what works, what doesn't work. We'll touch base with our resource agencies to see what concerns they may have for wildlife, our historic or archeological concerns. And then we'll come back to you and we'll work on the NEPA project and, and get some more feedback and sort of move forward. Um, that's pretty much, I want to open this up to questions, but real quickly, I wanted to double check, is uh, Melly Doobie here with us yet? Yep, I'm here, John. I'm sorry, I was a couple minutes late. No, that, that's fine. Melly has a little bit of environmental information she's going to share with us, and then we'll, we'll cut back to any questions you guys have or anything uh, you want to share with us that may help us go forward with this project. Go ahead, Melly. Thanks, John. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Um, so like John said, my name is Melly Doobie. Um, I'm the environmental manager for this project. So I work in the Bureau of, Bureau of Environment at DOT. Um, we are having the consultant, uh, McFarland Johnson, do the environmental review for this project um, as well. But I, I've been working closely uh, with them. So I got an update from them on how that process is going. Um, so just to give you guys a little bit of background, John mentioned uh, several of the things that we'll be looking into, um, but basically um, it's sort of my job to make sure that the project uh, progresses forward in compliance with the National Environmental Policy Act, the NEPA Act. So if you hear, to us, hear us refer to the NEPA document, um, that is the document that will come um, from that process. So we just, uh, as the alternatives are developed, we sort of assess the impacts um, of each alternative to cultural, um, natural, and kind of social um, resources in the area. So, um, <coughs> pardon me. So one of the um, most important things uh, to bring up to the town uh, and the public 
for us is the um, historic resources in the project area uh, because we want to make sure that we get your input um, as to uh, any knowledge that you have about local resources. We do a study on our own, um, but it really helps to have that local knowledge. Uh, so um, the historic review is to make sure that everything is in accordance with Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act. Um, and basically that just means that we need to find out if there are any properties um, above ground or below ground that are eligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, so those can be any buildings um, over 50, year, 50 years old or older or a valuable archaeological sites. Um, so to date, we are aware of two properties in the project area that have uh, structures that are older than 50 years old. Right now, I don't believe that there are any significant impacts proposed to those properties, but we will continue to assess that um, as we develop the alternatives and we will work with Federal Highway and um, the Division of Historical Resources to assess the impacts and mitigate for anything, if, for any impacts if we do have them, if it's necessary. Um, so we would ask that if there is any local knowledge of historic or cultural resources in the area, even just things like stone walls or any information about archaeological sites, that would be really fantastic. Um, I do need to formally inform you. Um, normally I do this in person, so I have pamphlets to hand out, but I don't have them today, so I will email them to the uh, John and he can get it to you. Um, uh, so Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act does require that we let you know um, that you do have the opportunity to become a consulting party on any projects that have his impacts to historic resources. Um, so that can include members of the public that are directly associated with the resource, historical societies, uh, town officials, uh, organizations like that. And if you do wish to become a uh, consulting party, you can have input on the design uh, development in an advisory capacity. Um, you would need to inform Federal Highway directly if you do wish to become a consulting party. So again, I will get that information to John and he can send it out to, uh, to everyone so you can disperse it and review that process if you wish. Um, so that's it for the historical stuff. Um, just a quick summary of some of the other resources that we've been looking into in the project area. Um, obviously, we will have impacts to the Little River and the associated wooded uh, forest and wetlands in the area. Um, we are working with the Department of Environmental Services and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to make sure that we are designing the project in the most responsible way possible. Our, our goal is always to minimize and avoid impacts as much as possible and then adequately mitigate for impacts when they're not avoidable. Um, we've also been working with the New Hampshire Natural Heritage Bureau and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. They've identified a few um, species in the project area that had, there were known records in the vicinity. Um, there's a couple of plant, two plant species, as well as um, an endangered turtle species and an endangered eel. Um, so we will be uh, further coordinating with them to make sure that we include um, measures to minimize impacts to those species as part of the design and the construction. Um, we also are within the range of the federally protected northern long-eared bat, so we will also be employing measures to make sure we minimize impacts to that species as much as possible. Um, finally, we do not have any anticipated adverse effects to water quality um, in the project area. We also do not have any anticipated impacts to conservation lands or to contaminated uh, resources, contaminated materials in the project area as well. So the, um, the endangered species and the wetland impacts will be the um, bulk of the coordination going forward for NEPA. And that's all I have. So if anyone has any questions for me, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Melly. Um, Julie, I had one more slide at the end, which is more just a slide. At, um, oh, sorry, one more beyond the questions. This one I just popped in as an aerial. So as we talked, if anybody had questions or wanted to describe part of something, this might help us locate it and get a little better sense. 
um, kind of opening the floor for any feedback, any thoughts, any observations, something that can help us develop this design in, in a way that works best for everyone. Any, any thoughts, anyone? John, are you taking questions? Yes, we'll take questions. Um, uh, I do have a question. Well, I have a question and some information. One, in terms of the culvert, what is causing the corrosion in the culvert at this time, Don? Do you know? Um, I don't know other than it's just a natural process um, with these culverts. The, the design life of these things aren't, aren't the greatest. Um, I think there's actually a microorganism that eats some of the uh, material, but I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Mm, okay. Um, one of the things you did mention in terms of making the, the opening larger, like it was when the railroad was there, is yeah. that going to affect anything downstream? Because we have, there's a bridge that goes, uh, the Carton Road goes over, which is a little bit downstream. Is that going to affect any bridges downstream that you know of? We actually, McFarland Johnson will be doing a hydraulic study on that portion. They've done a, some base hydraulic study on upstream to the culvert to make sure we pass the Q50s and the Q25s and how much it'll affect. Um, our initial thought is no, it will not be a problem, um, but we haven't finished running the numbers to be able to give a definite hard and fast no. It okay. doesn't look likely at this point. Uh, one thing, and this is just from Melly, um, downstream right before Cartland Road, um, there is an old mill site, the uh, Little River Mill site, and there is foundation stones for the mill that's still there. So that, for the town of Lee, that's a historical site. So I'm not sure if you're aware of that, Melly, but um, that's something to consider as well. Thank you. That's good to know. I will share that information with Christine and make sure that she looks into it to make sure our limits are outside of the impact. Okay. Thank you. That was yeah. it. And a little bit of quick background. Christine is um, our environmental person at McFarland Johnson that we're dealing with. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank yes. Thank you, John. Yes. Okay. Thank you. If you don't mind, I have a question. Um, I, sure. I would anticipate, this is Carrie Brown. I would anticipate that, uh, as you get into this project, there's going to be several occasions where you would have to shut down 125 and do some, uh, if you would, alternative routing. And, and from my position, <laughs> there's a little self-interest here, uh, <laughs> that would that would route a lot of people probably onto Fox Garrison Road uh, and up around uh, coming down Cartland Road, which is really a historic site for the entire road just about yeah and uh I, w I would be very very concerned about the amount of traffic that comes up comes up fox garrison and then routes across cartland i think possibly we'd have an issue with that traffic going down cartland road to be honest with you we we'll have to go down 152 but i, I it's just uh, something i want to bring up that could be a very sensitive issue no thank you very much carrie i appreciate that um, we had, you know, because typically when we start a project, we take a quick look around to see detours and detour lengths and uh, the shape the roads and the intersections are. Um, and with 20,000 vehicles a day, we really want to avoid that in this particular case. We're going to do everything we can to avoid that. Um, that's why we're hoping to be able to do this with phase construction. And in doing so, I, I guess I forgot to mention that this particular phase construction, uh, we intend on keeping two lanes open at all time, a north and a southbound. We may have to neck them down and shrink the shoulder widths a bit to accomplish this. Um, so our goal and hope here is not to have to use any detours. You, it's true we may have a stop traffic condition for a short time, um, and this is usually done in off hours when we're delivering, say it's going to be steel girders. Um, they'll have either a rolling roadblock or a, a 15 minute stop in the middle of the night where they'll drive the girders down a big flatbed truck and they'll lift them into place. And so they'll stop, get the one girder off, let traffic go and bring the next one. And that's the only thing I would anticipate at this point. Um, but again, it is very early on, but yes, I, I, absolutely agree with you with the volume of traffic in the roads around there but we'll keep that in mind thank you carrie all right thank you sir 
Any other questions? Um, can I ask two more questions, John? Oh, sure. As I don't want to monopolize like. if anybody, but a couple of things in terms of one, usually you guys have, and I say, when I say you guys, it's usually a construction firm, a staging area. Is that something you can work with? Maybe the racetrack people, there's a field right there and I'm not sure what you guys need, but is that something you guys are considering? Um, typically, we allow the contractor to make his own arrangements for staging. Um, but obviously to us, that's probably the first place that can, the contractor is going to go um, because he's got a great lower sort of area that he doesn't look like he's used for parking. And I would, I would expect very much that he would approach to do a lot of the staging in that area. Right. He but does again, use that. He does use that field for parking when he has big events. So it's right. not like it's not used at all. Yeah. He does yeah. use it for overflow parking. But yeah. um, the other question I had is in terms of timing, uh, and I'm talking about, are you looking at 2021, 2022? When, you, when are you looking in terms of having this project put in place and have it being completed? <laughs> We've been discussing that just recently too. Um, the earliest we think we can get there would be uh, the summer of 2022. Okay. And that would mean, uh, assuming we're able to do all this with inside uh, right of ways and not have to uh, get some temporary construction easements and things like that. Um, so I would say right now, 2022, 2023, or 2022's a, a little bit of a long bet. 2023 is a, a little more reasonable at this point. Um, but we always get, we get curveballs sent to us occasionally that throws our schedules right out the window. Thank you. Yep, thank you very much. Any other questions? I just, I just have a statement, Karen Rossi, Planning and Zoning Administrator. So, Hi, Karen. Hello, I'm the property owner. My husband and I own the property that floods. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so if, yep. because of the unders, undersized culvert, it backs up and floods our property, closes, crosses the road, makes the road close. And floods yep. our property so if there's anything we can do to speed this up that'd be great i would appreciate it okay thank you very much we'll do our best thank you you're welcome any other questions well i appreciate it john it was a nice presentation a very detailed and we'll work with you to get you as much information as we possibly can yeah, and I'll, I'll probably reach out to you periodically if something comes up and at some point we'll put together a and other public officials, probably um, public informational, maybe combine it. But once we go back to a little bit more research and have a little bit more concrete evidence. But don't hesitate to reach out to us if something pops up in your mind later in the evening, like it always happens with me. Um, and we really appreciate you taking a moment to listen. So at this point, I'll sign off. But again, don't hesitate to let us know if you come up with something else. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you guys. Take care. We'll move on to the next order of business. Uh, Tom Stronsfield, police chief. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, you should have in the consent agenda, uh, we were awarded another highway safety grant uh, for fiscal year 2021. Um, <clears throat> because our officers did such a stellar job <laughs> with the grants uh, this past year, uh, very proactive, a lot of arrests, a lot of stops. Uh, our grant award this year was almost double, uh, $15,750. So we just need a signature from the board um, to accept the grant. Any questions for the police chief? I don't see much moving around there. Before I move to accept the highway safety grant acceptance agreement in the amount of $15,750 as presented. Do I have a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion on the motion? No. Nicely said. Hearing that, let's go for a vote. Mr. Brown, your vote. Yes. Mr. Bugby. Yes. Ms. LaCourse, yes. Motion carries. Anything else, Chief? That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Next item on the agenda, Don Jeans, Conservation Commission Chair, Lee Trails Committee. Hi, good evening. Uh, we've been working a lot um, with our town-owned land and conservation land this year and seeing a lot of um, heavy use. And uh, there's some need to do some maintenance on different trails. 
And to help with the workload, we'd like to start a trails committee. And these folks would help us with an inventory of the trails that are on town owned land and what the needs are and uh, come up with plans for how we're going to fix things. It gives us an opportunity to help get some things done. It gives us an opportunity to reach out to people who are interested in this topic and might give us a source of future Conservation Commission alternates or members. Uh, it increases the community ownership of these things when people have participated in it. So we'd like your blessing on officially forming a trails committee, calling it the Lead Trails Committee. It would be a subcommittee of the Conservation Commission and it would be the, the spearheaded by a member of the Conservation Commission. Anyone that came to be a member of this, we would ask that they be sworn in as members and we would take official minutes and post meetings. Uh, so it, it would be, um, as I said, a subcommittee of the Conservation Commission, but to help us with a lot of the work. So you're seeing an outline of what our objectives and goals are and responsibilities um, if you get, and then uh, again, spearheaded by a liaison who we've already selected to be uh, Deb Sugarman, who's been very active. Um, we had a great uh, trail maintenance workshop that we co-hosted with Cooperate Extension October 25th. And we had several additional citizens from Lee that came and participated in that workshop out of interest. And we had some citizens that volunteered and helped with the kiosk building at Little River Park. So there are folks out there that are willing to be generous with their time and help out. And we'd like to captivate on that and uh, capitalize on that and uh, help make our town properties healthier. So on a couple of questions, just for curiosity, how many trails do we have in Lee? Well, item number one, we'll be doing an inventory. Okay. So it's, it, I, we don't have a rough idea right now, um, but it would be starting with all the town owned lands, the mm -hmm. property, what trails exist, what condition are they in. And so that would be the first order of business was a complete inventory and what the needs are. So then we can prioritize what should be worked on first. And uh, with the advent of so many things that are part of being, you know, like all trails or um, track my hike and whatever, uh, we, we have some published trails on some of this, so, on these social media apps now, but it would be also making sure they're accurate and complete. And it provides a good way to get information to the public uh, on their phones before they even show up at property. And how many members of the trails committee do, which you would we, expect? We did not, we did not set a, a limit. We haven't posted a minimum or a maximum. Okay. Questions uh, from the floor. This is very timely. I think uh, today, uh, John, if you don't mind me, I have a little, a sure. little uh, discussion here. Um, uh, Julie distributed a, a letter that was received or an email that was received from Larry Kinberg that was received from a Mrs. Wolf on Cartland Road relative to some uh, recent issues she had with people on the trail that runs uh, laterally behind her house, uh, her property, which is on, uh, I won't give the uh, exact address, which is on Cartland Road and uh, runs all the way down to the edge of the river um, and is traversed by uh, a trail, which is uh, a, a combination of a walking trail and a snowmobile trail. And she's had some problems with people and uh, how they've treated the land, if you would, behind her house. Uh, the issue I think she mentioned in her email relative to hacking into her Wi-Fi has been fixed by her. Uh, she made it a secure system with passwords, etc. So I'll take that out of the uh, out of the uh, talk here. Uh, I went there this morning and met with her. I walked the property line with her because I was kind of concerned over some of the things she said. And 
to be honest with you, and I told her this, I don't see how we can solve this problem. Uh, it's really a function of people coming up out of the park or entering from the trailhead, which is at on Cartland Road, and uh, and walking on the trail, and absolutely ignoring the fact that there are some signs, some signs that say this is private property, and some signs that say no hunting. There's a couple of snowmobile uh, association signs that are put up. However, they're not addressed to snowmobiling. They simply say, stay on the path or stay home. It's kind of an in-your-face uh, sign. If you're, if you're not passing by on a snowmobile, it might, it might upset you a little bit. So I think it is something that we truly need to get involved in and some of, uh, some of our signage. I don't see any way to fix it. There's people that enter from the park and climb up the trail and walk along the, the, this trail, and some of them simply ignore the fact that it's posted as uh, private property on the right-hand side, but it's not posted on the left-hand side. Um, but I encourage you to get this going and look at how we handle some of the signage of people, uh, because you can enter it from Cartland Road or you can enter it from the park. It's a very, very widespread, if you would, trail the way it works its way down and passes behind many houses across pro their private property. The trail runs across their private property because their property runs all the way down to the edge of the river. So we need to, we need to figure out how we could do some signage that, uh, if you would, reinforces the fact that that really is private property and you need to stay on the trail to stay off as much as you can stay off the private property it's a it's a significant problem she's very concerned about people that have come up the trail and stayed behind her house they're talking on the phone because they could get to the wi-fi but she has some if you would some uh, they have some children in the house uh the husband may or may not be home at the time, and and uh, it's a it's a serious issue. Uh, I'll, it's a it's a very difficult issue. There are room there is room at the trailhead on Cartland Road for several cars. I'll say several, two or three, to park, and people get out and start walking down through there. Somehow or another, we need to get some signage that reinforces the fact that it really is private property, people, and you really do need to stay on the trail or else something, and I don't know what that something is. Anyway, I'll stop talking. Um, <laughs> she was a very nice lady to talk to, and uh, I would like us, and of course, of course, by the way, she's not the only house that backs up to Little River. It's a lot of property, but it goes all the way down to the edge of the river, and we need to understand how we manage that. Thank you very much. Sorry. Bye. <laughs> I, excuse me one second. I just want to do a slight correction. The trail access is on Thompson Mill Road, or excuse me, Lee Hill Road. Okay. Yes, you're right. Yes. Because yeah. people are probably like, what, what's he talking about? Before it, before it turns into Cartland Road, that's where the trailhead is. You're right. Yeah. And it's a snowmobile trail. It is a snowmobile trail. Mm -hmm. It is in throughout New England and just about any state that has snowmobile and ATV trails mm -hmm. that stay on the trail or stay home is a universal sign. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of snowmobiles or ATVers will will go off trail and cause damage on the home the landowner's property, which then causes the landowner to take permission back and we lose trails. So yeah, that stay on the trail or stay home is a pretty universal sign anywhere there's ATVs or snowmobiles. Uh, Mr. John, uh, and maybe Don can help me. I, I was hoping maybe Catherine could be here, but I don't think that's one of the trails that the Conservation Commission maintains. It's more of a tra snowmobile trail. So I'm not sure how much the Conservation Commission can do about that because that's not one of their recognized trails. So. I'm not sure if that's a town issue or what, but I don't think it's a conservation issue. It's not one of their trails. Well, right. what, makes it, what makes it their trail, Scott? 
they maintain it and they acknowledge that they're ones that put up signs and take a look at it. So you know, how do they choose that? How do they say, yeah, we'll take this one, but we won't take that one? Well, and it's actually not, it's an old road. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> it was years ago, the access to the back access to the pit. Okay. All I can say is we have X number of residents of Lee that are having a problem and we need to see what we can do to help them. Thanks, Karen. Can I ask Karen a question? Please. This is the same road that we walked on, Karen, when I was talking about having a second access to Little River Park, correct? Correct. Yep. So there's so, a house up on top of the peak. So it's my understanding that the snowmobile people get permission for from the landowners to use that as a snowmobile conveyance, correct? Right. That could be. You know, she has no problem with people traversing yep. across there if they would just understand that it really is private property on both sides of the trail. I, I had suggested posting it. Yeah. Um, I had offered to put a camera down there to see if we could uh, find out who it is. A lot of times, um, you know, one, uh, Mrs. Wolf had made a report, but she sent me a Facebook message to my private page, and which I rarely check. So I, I didn't get it for about a month and a half after she had called. And I sent the lieutenant down there, it was a, about a dumping issue. Um, you know, we can put a trail camera down there. You know, I, I have conversations with her husband, Dan. Um, you know, they don't necessarily want to bother us, I guess it is, at the time it's happening, but it, it would be better for us if we get the call at the time it's happening and we could go down there uh, rather than try to play catch up. Sounds like a way to go. Thank you, Chief. Any questions of Dawn about this committee of the conservation? Yeah, Dawn, can you speak to the board? One of the things at the bottom, it says responsibilities of the Highway Works, uh, the Public Works Department. Can you speak to a little bit about that? And I assume, Steve Bullock, you're okay with that? Well, we're, we, we added that because we won't be asking any volunteers to do chainsaw work on town-owned property. It's been the policy I've understood for several years that if any of that work needs to happen, it's going to happen with um, Department of Public Works employees. So anything that volunteers would be doing would be just loppers and pruners and hand tools, but nothing that was as dangerous as a chainsaw or using a mower. Yep. And that's what you guys do now anyways, correct? That's right. That's, yep. that's just... Okay. No, but don't want it. We don't want anybody starting off thinking they're going to rev up the chainsaws and go out. <laughs> I hope do some work. <laughs> Any other questions about Don? Therefore, I move to establish the Lee Trails Committee, a subcommittee under the guidance of the Lee Conservation Commission. Do I have a second? Second. Further discussion of the motion? No. Thank you. Roll call vote. Mr. Bugby? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Ms. LaCourse, yes, motion carries. Congratulations, Dawn. Okay, we'll we report back to you in the future after we get our inventory started. Thank you very much. All right, bye-bye. Right. Next item of business, uh, Selectman Bugby, THRC member. Can I, can I just interrupt for a second about the membership on that committee? Please. Um, I heard her say, yes, they need to be sworn in, so we'll be doing... We'll do a recruitment. We'll put. We'll do a little bit of advertising that we're starting okay. it up, and then we'll drive people to get the uh, sign-in forms. Okay, great. And um, go through that process. Go through but the process. We didn't, we didn't want to begin recruiting until we'd had your blessing. That's okay. Then we'll just put the applicate the the swearing in document in front of the board for signature, and then it will go to the clerk's office, and then yes. they'll be sworn in. Yes. Okay. Yes. And we're not doing a minimum or maximum of members. No, no. Uh, we don't know what kind of turnout we're going to have. We don't know. Okay. Well, I assume the maximum could be is the membership of the Conservation Commission, correct? Not really. I mean, if we had 10 people that wanted to help us out, we'd take all 10. Okay. I think the idea is, John, that these people would be covered underneath our insurance mm -hmm. because they're part of the Conservation Commission, kind of? Yes. That was the thought uh, because 
they can always have subcommittees and they can do the signing sheet and sign out, but this gives them a more permanency. That was the idea. Yep, I think it's a good idea. All right, thank you guys. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Bugby, you have the floor. Um, this is a question from the THRC. Um, we're talking about different uses for the town hall. And one of the things we keep talking about is meetings. And one of the things that we've come across is this particular proposal would probably resonate with more people if it was termed a function space. Um, and this is really, I'm not looking for a vote or whatever, I'm just looking for an indication. Um, one of the things we thought that might be good, um, and we've done some research, other towns do this with their facilities, is to allow other people to use the facility for different things, maybe for a blood drive, maybe for, you know, Uncle Joe's birthday party, those kind of things. Um, and we'd have probably something like a deposit for cleaning. If they don't clean it, they don't get their deposit back. Also the possibility of having some kind of a rental agreement. You know, if you wanna use it for a wedding reception, there's a charge for that. Many other towns do that. Um, and it, the thought is that this would give the proposal a little bit more support um, in terms of people from the town. Uh, we get a lot of requests to use the pavilion. Um, so this would be a space that can be used, you know, all year round. That's one of the things. And I'm just checking based on the THRC's request to see if the board would be even consider something like that. If it's totally out of the realm, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but we wanted to explore if that's a possibility. I, I don't see why you say it's totally out of the realm. I think no, no, I'm just... <laughs> I think that's exactly speak what the we board. said it should be. I can't speak for the board, so I'm just asking you as a board if that's something that you might consider doing in the future. Because right now, if you don't have insurance, you can't use any of our facilities. You can come and, and ask us, uh, the board, permission to waive that. But this would be something that possibly, even if it assists with costs with the maintenance of the building, maybe it makes a little bit of money. Um, but I think it would give a place for people to do stuff like that in the town. Um, and definitely one of the things that the other towns do is the cleaning deposit. You know, there's usually $50. If you clean up after yourself and it's put in the right condition, get your money back. If you don't, you lose your deposit and that would pay for somebody from the town to clean up the mess or whatever. So well, I, I think it's exactly how we should use the building, whether it's the scouts or a blood drive or, uh, one of the other committees we have, or, 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 you know, uh, I, I think it's exactly how it should be. That's my opinion. Actually, I like the idea myself. I mean, meeting space is always important. Um, obviously, there'd probably be some regimented activities that, uh, you know, the, the governance of the town of Lee would take precedence and use of space if needed. But the idea of using functions, I, I think it's appropriate. Uh, I think there's great opportunity for expansion for I don't, don't take it the wrong way, but a senior center where people can go at certain times and do different things. So not necessarily seniors, but youth as well. Yeah. So I like the idea of calling it function. I think it works really fine. Function and meeting space. All absolutely. Right. All so right. I think it's in the right direction. And, uh, just all, the, Mr. And, and just as an update, we're working through, we've got, we think something that's close to for, for the reconfiguration of the 1968 expansion space where the town clerk tax collector is. Uh, so working through those, the things we got left in terms of getting a final number in terms of um, for the water, source of water, that's one thing that we're looking for. Um, and in terms of the big thing for us is the second floor. We haven't come to a kind of determination in terms of do we explore putting in some kind of a, a, a lift or whatever or not or leave it the way it is or what we do with the second floor. So that's some, something we're still looking into. So that's kind of an update um, for the board in terms of what we've done so far. Um, so we should have some numbers for you by the end of this, well, excuse me, next month. Appreciate uh, it. Scott, I just want to remind you, um, the second floor happens to be the uh, home of the first Lee Library. Yes. And at one time, I think Ruth moved the books now, but at one time, all of the original books, et cetera, et cetera, are up there. So it could be uh, kind of more 
as part of the museum that could be reconstructed, which wouldn't take much, uh, as the, the, the original Lee Library, because I only had six, seven books in there. <laughs> <laughs> I think they had a few more than that, but... <laughs> I didn't have many more. I went. I was up there for a while, but it didn't have many more. The, the other thing, we're, and this is just something we're still working on. Uh, John Tapp has taken the lead on this, but based on the age of the building, there are some things that you can do um, that ADA will let you do in a historic structure and some things they won't let you do. So we're exploring some of that yeah. um, in terms of what's possible. The other I, think thing it, we're exploring, I think it would make a great walkthrough kind of thing for, uh, for visitors to see, you know, the original Lee Library and so on. Yeah. So the other thing we're working through, which I probably should have talked to the DOT guy, but maybe he doesn't like us that much, but whatever. But um, as you step out of the front vestibule for the, the town hall right onto one, uh, the mass road, um, working to see what we can do because the right of way for the state comes right up to that, that particular door. So that's one of the things John's looking into in terms of they have some... Um, things that they allow you to do in the right of way and some of the things that they don't. So that's something that John's looking into as well. So that, that's a big concern because we need, for that size room, we need some uh, two forms of egress and we already have one, um, but we need the, the second one. So, and it needs to be ADA coming out of that. So that's something they can jump out also. the window. I'm sorry? So they can jump out the window. Okay. <laughs> Depends on who's using the function, right? If they're in a wheelchair, Mr. Brown, I don't think no. that works too good, but, you know. I know. <laughs> so a couple of people that were on the meeting have lost power. Uh-oh. So my suggestion would be right now, if you are wrapping up your discussion, Mr. Bugby. Yes, I'm done. To have the board accept the consent agenda. That way we don't have to have another meeting to circle back and do that. I and agree. then if we all still have power, I'll do my stuff. Okay. Let's move on at this point in suggestion of the town administrator. We'll go to item number seven. I move to accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. Discussion on motion. No discussion. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Bugby. Yes. Ms. LaCrosse, yes. It's Carrie, town administrator. Thank you. Um, so as you know, uh, we did receive permission, written permission from the DOT to use Buzzle Lane as a temporary entrance to the Daly Building. Um, that permission is only good for a year, so something else would have to be done out on Route 125 by the end of November 2021. So coupled with that, I contacted the moving company and secured a date of January 5th. And wow. <laughs> assuming that we are still moving forward on this, which I think we are, um, I would suggest that that is the date, barring an absolute disaster or some situation that we can't think of right now, that that's the moving date and we start gearing up um, to move in on that date. So mm -hmm. that gets us past the due date for the tax bills. It gets us past the holidays. Julie, can I ask, uh, uh, are you satisfied with the interior of the building that everything is done or is there any other major work that needs to be done before? Yeah, we no, all of the work has been completed um, except for those things that require us to be in the building, um, such as the computer system, um, plugging in the telephones and getting trained on the phone system. And then there's a tie-in to the um, security system. But and all of that requires us to be in the building. Okay, but how much, so, so when would that get done so that you are ready on January 5th to move in? That happens on or about January 5th. Okay. So. Do we have a bad weather date, Julie? No. So Blizzard, you'll still do it? <laughs> yes, I guess we could talk to the moving company about that. <laughs> um, the other thing is, as you know, so Karen and I have been working together along you know, with the vendors and so forth 
um, on getting the building ready for us. As of right now, we are $925 over our estimated budget. Oh, no. <laughs> my, my recommendation would be to just keep an eye on it. And once we're finally in the building, do a final accounting. Um, we could do one of a few things, depending on the amount of money that we need. Um, either take it out of current operating budget. Um, we all take it out of contingency. We also still have, I believe, $10,000 that had not yet been allocated from the 2019 municipal aid grant that the state gave us. Do, do we have an estimate for the computer system wiring, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, we do. I, I have all those numbers in the budget for this project, but a few of the things of the work that's already been done have gone over in a few other areas, there was some savings. So as of right now, that's why I say we're $925 I over the estimated budget. Okay. Uh, John, I don't know about you or Mr. Brown, but I think we should shut this project down yeah. being $925 over. This is just too much. <laughs> it's getting too carried it's away, isn't it? Too much. <laughs> Charlie, what are you doing what do you over there? Think, Scott, I'll, I'll second it if you want. No, I, no, I didn't make a motion. No. <laughs> you better be cut, cut back on that motion. I see they did a nice job on the paving over there. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I heard about that. <laughs> um, hey, anything else there, Julie? Are there any other questions about the office space? Uh, I did have one person email me. They took a trip down Buzzle Lane, and they were very... Um, perplexed in terms of how to get to there. And I assume, and I vaguely remember, there's gonna be a whole bunch of signs, right? Directing them to where to go? Uh, yes, there are gonna be, I think it's attached here. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, there, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of signs. With all, with all due respect, you can see the building from Bustle Lane. Right. I mean, you know, we're not talking about traversing the desert. Um, but, we yeah, had already but, anticipated installing a number of signs and DOT added a few, so there are going to be a lot of signs. And this is the plan where it's blocked off from 125, correct? Correct. Okay. Is there any modifications you have to make the buzzle line? Just the signage. So there's no um, you know, rails or anything else you got to put in? Uh, no. Okay. Nope. And I'm not sure. Which part is the town responsible for plowing? Uh, well, it was going to be our parking lot. Yep. But I don't, I actually can't recall whether that made it into the final lease. It may be the mowing that they have to do, but not the plowing, or I might have those reversed. So, But if we are responsible for plowing, it is just the area around the building. Okay, so... But, Mr. Mr. Daly will plow Buzzle Lane itself then? Yes. Okay. He has to. Okay. I mean, he does now, even if we're not there. Well, the, the thought is in terms of the timeliness, because I know our people are out in the middle of the storm, you know, keeping it clean. But is Mr. Daly going to do the same thing? You know, if people are going to come, you know, it's snowing, it's 12 o'clock noontime. Mm -hmm. And we've got four or five inches of snow. Is he going to plow Buzzle Lane, or is he going to wait till it's done? I, I well, think I mean, he has he has tenants in this building. Okay. And he has he uses this building. Okay. So. I just don't want us to assume that you know he's going to do it on a timely basis. Our, our highway people are very particular about right. You know, keeping it's, things clean. So it's typically pretty clear throughout the storms. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. If I could, I'd like to walk through the building with you. Walk through the building? Well, yeah, I'd like to see it before we move in. Sure. Um, I will be, do you want to do that this week? I'm not back in the office again until next week. I think okay, we that's fine. Okay. We'll Can I come too? For next week. Can I come too? Sure. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. I saw it when it's profit key, but not afterwards. Right. Anything else? 
Uh, no, that's it. I think we need to give whoever I think is Karen and Julie a round of applause for getting the Buzzle Lane thing approved. So, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank well, you I don't to know, both of you. Might have been more Karen other than my screaming and yelling and jumping up and down. What about this tree lighting? Uh, tree lighting. So the Friends of the Lee Library and the library typically do something in connection with the tree lighting. Um, but they are not going to be doing that this year because of COVID. So uh, the, the power is on at the triangle and the lights are on the tree. So we're just wondering whether the board wants us to just randomly flip the switch and the lights are on. Or do you want to do something, say, on Saturday around 4 o'clock, this upcoming Saturday, and we can maybe advertise it a little, um, and one of the selectmen flip the switch? So, so, Julie, generally the tree lighting is followed by some kind of choir, uh, music, etc. in the Grange. Do they, uh, do they plan on doing that, or are they not going to do it? No, they're not doing that. They're not going to do it. So it would just no. be the tray lighting and one song. Yep. Okay. I, I personally would like us just to flip the switch and be done with it. I don't want us to create an event where people are together and then the town gets blamed for somebody getting sick. I don't think we want to get into that. I feel the same way as Scott does. Okay. okay. We'll just flip the switch. Uh, we'll flip the switch and get the tree lit. I guess, Julie, you make the decision when to flip yep. the switch. Okay. It's a timer, right? Yes. So it'll just come on and off after you flip it? Yes. Okay. Yep. Miscellaneous unfinished business. Anything? No. I have, one, I have one thing to bring up. I, Julie, talked to me again. We had brought it up a while back, whether we want to have a formal deliberative session or something as an information transfer. When do we have to make the formal decision? <laughs> Uh, we probably have a couple of weeks. We're still waiting on NHMA and the AG's office to give, and the governor's office to give us guidance on that. It was supposed to be forthcoming. Quite frankly, I would have expected it already, but we haven't seen it yet. You know, as uh, you know, Slickman Bugby was saying about people gathering. I'm not enthusiastic of running a deliberative session if we're right. all going to be sitting there, even though we have masks on. Yeah, the voting is a little bit different. People traversed and went through, but this would be different. Right. So um, I want to stay on top of this and make sure it doesn't slip by. Yeah, we're, like I said, we're waiting for guidance. Mm -hmm. And as with the other two uh, select people, if it comes down to the fact of walking through that building, I might want to go myself. Uh, okay. Um, we can have a that? little hot dog roast and maybe some s'mores <laughs> outside. Uh, do we want to plan on doing that next Monday? That'd be fine. I'm sorry, John, did you say s'mores? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, I, okay. I Does thought. anybody have a time in mind? Well, I asked John early. if it was on a tight schedule. Afternoon. There so, 2 o'clock? Sure. I'm sorry, what time? Two o'clock. Two o'clock on uh, next Monday. Yep, the 7th. December okay. 7th, a day of living in infamy. Mm-hmm. We got to have any champagne? No. <laughs> no alcohol on town property. No alcohol on town property. There's that, there's that budget issue again. <laughs> yeah. We'll meet you there. Fine, uh, I'll bring the champagne. Good. Can I ask the board a question? Please. Usually, well... Evaluations are due tomorrow, so yeah. we at some need time need to come together as a, a non-public to talk about those particular things. Mm -hmm. The other thing, we usually do a Volunteer of the Year award, and we're not having a volunteer party, so do we still want to do that award this particular year? Well, I think award's appropriate just because you don't have a party. There's no reason to cancel them if we can come up with a Okay. If we have somebody or something or whatever that we think needs to be recognized. All right. We can still do it by Zoom. Absolutely. All right. So can we put something out in the e crier looking mm -hmm. for volunteers to be recognized for their, their or nomination. Of, uh, volunteerism during the year? 
People yeah. can nominate themselves or nominate others. Okay. All right. Denise, do you have the same thing we put in last year? Can you just run that again? Sure. All right. And when are we going to get together? Maybe at the next meeting on the 14th? There's a lot of things happening, but we need a time to get together to talk about evaluations. Absolutely. Do you want to do it on the 14th? No, yes. the 14th. All right, Julie, can you give us a non-public to do that on the 14th? Yes. And I got one from Karen today for her staff person. Mm -hmm. I assume the rest of them are done? And yeah, I got one too. Uh, I don't know, you know, am I supposed to just sign it and send it back or? No, I the board, it's kind of just information for the board and then you'll discuss them all. Okay. Yeah. But I assume, Julie, you've, you're collecting them, right? Correct. Yeah, Karen asked me if she should just send it directly to you, and I said yes. All okay. Right. No, it's but fine with me. Do you have any others or just that one? Uh, I have the police departments, which is somewhat voluminous. I haven't determined yet how to get that to you. Voluminous. <laughs> Can you scan them and then send that over to the three of us? Yeah, that's one way I could do it. Mm -hmm. just like, I'll, talk, I'll talk to the chief about okay. about it. All right. Yeah, you can always just drop it off in the mailbox, right? Yeah. 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 I can do like we used to do in Durham. We used to deliver them to the council member, the council packets. There we go. You can do that. <laughs> All right. I guess Scott could do the same thing, right? Well, that's usually what happens. I get them and then I scan them and send them to you two. That's to right. You, so. That's fine. That's fine. Somebody has to scan them. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Anything All else? Right. Any other business? No. Nope. Move to adjourn. Second. All Second. Second. Third. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Good night now.